In this video, I'm going to work through five different tips for graphing logarithms. If you struggle with graphing logarithms, this video is made for you. And even if you think that you know how to graph this and you're okay with logarithms, I'm telling you the last two. In this video, I'm going to go over five different tips that you can use to be able to graph logarithms. So if you struggle with graphing the logarithmic function, then this video is definitely made for you. And even if you think you know how to graph this and you feel comfortable graphing logarithms, my last two tips are ones that a lot of times students forget, and that's where they make the mistakes on graphing a logarithm like this. So let's go into exactly my kind of process, and I'll highlight the tips that I would um, go over with my students um, inside the classroom. So the first one is always going to be when you're graphing a logarithm, you need to know what the parent graph is and the important points. So let's go over and at least just sketch a quick little version of the parent graph. I don't care what the base is. Guys, this could be a natural logarithm. This could be log base 10. It doesn't matter. They all have the exact same parent graph and important points. And the important points that we're going to talk about here is going to be the x-intercept, which is going to be at 1, 0. And we're going to have a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 0. Okay, so we need to make sure we understand those because once we start applying transformations, those are going to uh, change. So the next tip that I always tell students to do is always put it in your transformation form. You can see we have a lot of things going on here, right? There's shifts, there's compressions, there's reflections. And whenever we have a logarithm, especially like on a test or an exam, it doesn't always look the way that we, uh, that's easy for us to be able to digest it. Sometimes like we have the uh, vertical shift that's in front of the function. So what I always tell students to do is always rewrite it in this form. That's going to be y equals a times log of b times x minus c plus d. This is the transformation form that we use for all our functions, all right? It doesn't matter if it's a like a trigonometric function, if it's a square root function, the reciprocal, and most famously going to be the quadratic. Yes, I know quadratics, we use a lot of times h and k, but the numbers here are applying the exact same thing. So let's just do a quick little review of what each of these are going to do. A, remember, is vertically stretch or compress the graph as well as reflect about the x-axis. B is going to be horizontally stretch or compress the graph as well as reflect about the y-axis. C is going to be our horizontal shift and D is going to be our vertical shift. This remains the same for any trig or any function that you're going to graph. So we always want to remember it. Now you can see though, in our problem, it's not written exactly like this, okay? So what we want to do is I need to go ahead and fix what's inside of this argument so it looks like that. So to do that, a couple things we're going to do. I first need to rearrange this negative 2x in front of the 1. So just make sure that you keep your signs um, composed here. So I don't have any, I don't have an a in this example, but I'm going to rewrite this as a negative 2x. That's a positive 1. So plus 1 and then minus 1. Now to get these parentheses, what I need to do is factor out the negative 2. Okay. And sometimes that becomes difficult when you see that, all right, I can factor out a negative two from negative two X, but how do I factor a negative two from a positive one? Well, basically what you're doing is dividing out that term. That's what factoring is. You're dividing out a negative two. So when I take a one and I divide out a negative two, that's just going to give me a negative one half. Now, a little extra tip that I wasn't really planning on, uh, that's not part of my five tips is you can go back and always check your work, right? When you factor something out, even if it's like factoring quadratics, you can always go back and multiply it back out to make sure it works. So let's go and see what this is going to look like. And I'll see, and I'll show you why we can confirm that I am correct. So negative two times X is a negative two X. Negative two times a negative one half is going to be a positive one, right? Okay. So now we have it in our transformation form that now we can identify what are going to be our transformations. So we have nothing with the A, so there's no vertical stretch, compression, or uh, reflection about the x-axis. We have a negative two, that means we're going to be reflecting the y-axis, um, as well as doing a horizontal compression as a factor of two. We're gonna shift the graph one half units to the right, and we're gonna shift the graph um, one unit down. But the next tip is to not to try to do everything, right? Because that can be overwhelming. So the next tip that I always tell my students to do is let's just focus on the orientation first. Always, uh, always approach the orientation and then work on your horizontal and your vertical shifts. So what is going to impact our, uh, our orientation? Well, that's going to be reflections as well as stretching and compressing. Okay. So let's go and take our uh, original graph and actually, you know, uh, let's, let's draw it 
correctly. Let's all well, we can do it at one half. So here is going to be a graph. And let's do these. Let's say, ah, oh, no, I want to do this. Come on. Let's get it right there. And I'll say that's going to be one. OK, so we'll have our nice little graph. That's our parent graph. OK, so that's going to be y equals log of let's do base three of x. OK, um, so now let's go with the orientation and I will use a green. So the first thing we have is we have a reflection, right? That's a reflection about the y axis. So when I reflect this about the y axis, that's going to look something like this. Now, the other thing that's happening, though, and this is what's really important, um, is now we're going to be vertically or sorry, horizontally compressing the graph. OK, so. Um, what that's going to do, though, is that's going to now impact what we are looking at, because now um, so now we have this horizontal compression. So let's see, maybe the graph looks something like this. OK, but now what's going to happen is now I shift it one half units to the right and then one unit down. But here's the thing, guys, when you have a this shift or this compression, that's actually going to be impacting here what this y uh, what this old x intercept is going to be. So. Um, so that comes into my next tip is you have to be aware and careful of when we have this uh, when you have this B that is going to impact your x intercept. If you remember. Um, if you remember when we were dealing with exponential functions, when you have that a that impacts your y intercept, the exact same thing is happening here. When you have a B that is going to be impacting your x intercept. So focus right now. What I want you to do is, yeah, focus here on we shifted this, reflected it, and then we're going to move it one unit. OK, so what the reason why this is important is I can identify where my x intercept is or my sorry, my ver my vertical asymptote. So if I reflected it, that does not change. Right. But if I shift this over one half units, I don't know why I did it like that. Now, my vertical asymptote is over here. OK, now, unfortunately, though, we can't move this over one half units and then down one unit. OK, because there is actually a that horizontal compression. And that's what kind of gets into this really tip is to watch out for the horizontal compression. I don't really have an extra thing to write into there, but you got to watch out when you have a horizontal compression and shifts and reflection, that's going to impact your points. So what do we what do we use? Well, actually, let's do this for number four. Then if you get stuck with graphing, you're like, well, how do I graph this? then? if that's not that chord, if that's not a point on the graph shifting it left to in one year, like, what do I do? The best thing I can tell students to do the next tip is to focus on the basics, guys. Find the X and the Y intercept. OK, so let's go back to our equation. Log base three, one minus two X. So Y equals log base three of one minus a two X. And then what was that plus one or minus? That's minus one. OK, so how do we find the X and the Y intercept? Well, remember, ladies and gentlemen, the X intercept is when Y is equal to zero. The X intercept or the Y intercept is when X is equal to zero. So if you're having trouble, like find the transformations, like we know the vertical asymptote, right, is at X equals one half. So we have that done. But we need to remember that B is going to be impacting these points. So let's go and identify the X and the Y intercept, because a lot of times when we're looking for a graph, you need to know what those points um, are to verify, you know, how to graph it. So uh, let's go and plug zero in, or Y in zero in for Y. And when I do that, I get a log base three of one minus a two X minus one. Now I can add a one to both sides. One equals log base three of one minus a two X. Now I can exponentiate both sides. That's going to be three is equal to a one and minus a two X. I don't know why I use parentheses there. We don't need the parentheses. Uh, so one and minus a two X subtract one, subtract one, two is equal to a negative two X. Divide by negative two, divide by negative two, x is equal to a negative one. That is going to be our x intercept. To find the y intercept, we're going to say y equals log base three of one minus a two times zero minus one. All right, so negative two times zero is just going to be zero. So I have a y equals log base three of one minus zero. Now, three raised to what power is equal to one? That number is zero. 
So y equals a zero minus one, y equals a negative one. Okay, so right now, here's what we have for our graph. We have our x-intercept, which is at negative one, zero. We have our y-intercept, which is at zero comma negative one. And we know that our um, vertical asymptote from the transformations is going to be at x equals one half. Now, a lot of times this is enough to be able to graph the logarithm that would be sufficient for a test, an exam, or what your teacher is asking. But the fifth tip that a lot of students overlook is what about if you need a third point? Or what about if you need to verify if a point lies on the graph? So that comes into understanding what else could we do to find a third point? So here's what I want you to understand. I can figure out the logarithm of three to the first point three of log base three of one, right? That is going to be zero. I know the logarithm base three of three, that's equal to one. What would be the next easy logarithm that I could go ahead and solve for? Well, that'd be log base three of nine, right? Log base three of nine, that is equal to two. So if I wanna find another point that I can take the, uh, that I can evaluate this logarithm for, I want my argument to be able to equal to nine, right? So I need to figure out, well, what value for X could I plug in that would make this argument nine because then I could evaluate this logarithm. If you're just randomly picking numbers, right? You're, you're not always gonna get a logarithm that, you, an argument that you can evaluate the logarithm for, right? We want it to be a value that we can um, simplify that log or evaluate that logarithm on. And nine would be the best choice answer. You could obviously use like 27 or 81, but let's keep with the smallest ones um, for in this case. So all I'm simply gonna do for my last tip is to find another value that I can take the log of base three, four. So I'll say, I want nine, or I want one minus two X to be nine. All right, so now let's go ahead and solve. So I get eight equals a negative two X, divide by negative two, divide by negative two. So I get a negative four is equal to X. So that means when X equals negative four, what's gonna happen? Let's look at this. So I have Y equals log base three of, I mean, I'll plug it in, but we already know the answer is nine. Um, so negative four and then minus one. So one negative two times negative uh, four is a positive eight plus one is nine. Three log base three of nine is going to equal to two. So I have y is equal to two minus one. So y is equal to one. So at negative four, so one, two, three, four, I have a one. Now that is how you can find that third point. So now my logarithm is going to look something like that. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, those are the five tips to be able to graph a logarithm like this. I'm telling you, it can be confusing. Ladies and gentlemen, the best thing to do is to do practice with graphing, okay? So if you want more examples of me working through how to graph logarithms, then check out the playlist for you down below. If you just like more math tips, then check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.